This morning we're going to kind of Mother's Day talk about the influence of a godly mother. About three years ago I showed you these pictures, show them to you again. They're special to me because they are my mother. And this of course before she had a thought of who her children would be. But then as a young woman and as she progressed through the years and I happened to think she was a pretty lady. But unfortunately Death claimed her at age 53. It was a result of an automobile accident. And at the time, I guess I just say this, I didn't realize how young 53 was. But that was in 1983, so many, many years ago now. But you know, and I think you understand this, if your mother has passed away, that you always miss them, always. The hurt, the pain of immediately losing someone, yes, that gets easier. But you always miss them, always love them. My two sisters and I were very blessed. My mother was a Christian, but I just say this, it wasn't in name only. She lived it. I asked my sisters, this is again three years ago, and and I mentioned this three years ago. If you you remember it, just bear with me. I have an idea that most of you wouldn't and many of you weren't here then. But I asked my sisters, what are things that about mom that are special to you and you remember and, and that influenced you? My sister Charlotte, she read, she wrote, and I fall so short of her example. One thing I remember from her last years was how she did for others. If someone had been in the hospital, she would take food to them. She'd come home from work, and in less than two hours, she'd be taking them chicken and dumplings, greens, and a cake. She knew what they liked. She was also prepared to invite visitors home from church on Sunday for lunch. She was very hospitable and always prepared. She also cared for her parents when they were older. She brought them to live at our house when they could not stay alone in their house in the country anymore. My sister Sarah wrote, she never told me anything. There were things that happened and I was very curious as to the why of it, but mother never said a word and let me live in the world of curiosity. I remember coming home from school one day and church lady A, instead of saying her name, was asleep in your bedroom. Very odd. It was much later that she sort of explained a little bit, but but just enough. She wasn't a big talker, not a motor mouth. I was highly entertained when lady A or lady B, not going to mention their names, came over to visit because they were big talkers and would say all kinds of things. Mother did not join in their gossip. She had extreme control of her tongue. As I grew up, I learned how hard it is to keep control of the tongue and how extremely hurtful it is when it is used when it shouldn't be. I gained much respect for mom's ability to refrain from gossip as well as the fact that the more you run your mouth, things are likely to come out that shouldn't. I never heard mom talk about other people. I also realized that she was someone that a person could come to and talk to about their problems and they would not be repeated. And what I wrote was, if I were to rank those who most influenced me to preach, I would put my mother as first. When I was a little boy, she would tell me, you're going to be a preacher when you grow up. When you grow up, you're going to be a preacher. And then she would ask, what are you going to be when you grow up? Well, lately I wondered why she saw me or wanted me to be a preacher. No one that I am aware of on my mother's side of the family was a preacher. And she had only become a Christian a few years before, about the time I was born, or just before. But from her life, I know that she was the good ground 
that Jesus spoke of. She demonstrated faithfulness and taught us what faithfulness was. I think that preaching the gospel was just a logical conclusion to the way she was living her life. As I mentioned, I was blessed with a Christian mother. I'd like to think that everybody has been blessed with a Christian mother. It's just simply not true. It's simply not true. But yet I'm speaking to mothers today who can be that Christian mother. And I want us to see the influence of a godly mother. We're going to make mention of a great leader in just a minute. But I was just curious, who does the world think are great leaders? And so, hey, Google's good for a lot of things. So I went to this place, it's called Industry uh, leadersmagazine.com and they list 10 of the greatest leaders in the world some of these I would agree with and some I think and why would you put him on your list <laughs> well first one Mahatma Gandhi from India probably a worthy candidate George Washington Abraham Lincoln again I think worthy candidates but then I saw Adolf Hitler's name, and, and then Muhammad, and, and then Mao Zedong. And if you realize why, yes, they were leaders, and yes, they accomplished much. But when I take a step back and think great leader, I think accomplish something worthwhile and good and beneficial for mankind. Think about Adolf Hitler. Think of the millions that died because of his ambitions. Muhammad, starting a religion that's false and spreading the religion by the sword. Mao Zedong, uh, the great leader of China. But if you see how he united China and how they came to be what China is today. A lot of people suffered. Nelson Mandela, Julius Caesar, Fidel Castro, and I, with this one, I couldn't help but think, okay, he became the leader and for decades, but I thought in terms, well, it's just a kind of a small Caribbean island. And then Winston Churchill. You know, I think that probably as you see this list, you think, well, some of those belong there. And maybe you're like me, thinking, I don't think I would put him on that list. Of course, kind of walked away from it too, thinking, uh, no women on the list. But you know, as we think of a great leader, I really, when I looked at the list, I thought, you've got Muhammad and you don't have Jesus on that list? But then I would think not only just of Jesus, but some other Bible characters, one of the greatest leaders in the Old Testament. Wouldn't you have to say Moses? Moses. And if we kind of examine Moses and then say, how did he get to this point of being such a great leader? I convinced Mama was at the back of it all. In Exodus 14, verse 31, Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The emphasis here in this verse, of course, is on God's power. But they recognized God's power and Moses as that leader and servant from the Lord. How did he become such a great leader? You know, as you go back, and we're not going to take the time and, and study that time when he was at the burning bush, as God called him to then go back to Egypt, at this point about 80 years old. But you recall, he was reluctant, and he began to make excuses Okay, how did this guy that is so reluctant, makes excuses, 
How is it that he's the one God wants? And how is it that they, he then goes and makes that trip? Well, you recall he was given Aaron to be at his side. Aaron was his brother. Of course, heading then later the Levitical priesthood. Then there was a sister, Miriam. And you'd have to say, yes, here's a godly family. Why, all these years later, is it his brother Aaron who becomes his spokesman? How is it you read about Miriam having a significant uh, place in his life? Godly family. You can't help but think, can you? Godly parents. And then, okay, now let's back up a little bit. Before he ever went to Midian. You see, we could also say he was a great leader because he rejected the Egyptians. He was raised as an Egyptian. You remember the story about how that the parents kept him as long as they could. It was about three months. But yet the edict was these Hebrew babies be killed. And so they had him. They made a little, kind of little boat, a little ark. Put it amongst the reeds in the Nile to hide him. And then Pharaoh's daughter comes down to the Nile to bathe and sees Moses there. And ultimately she takes him, adopts him. He's raised as an Egyptian. And oh, by the way, don't you just imagine? He has the best education that Egypt has to offer. That he sees all of these, his fellow Hebrews, as the servants. Not him. He probably had servants. Probably the best that Egypt had to offer. Be it clothes, be it food. He had. But having all of this, he was willing to turn his back on it. Even though he was Pharaoh's daughter's son. In Acts 7, 22, and Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He was mighty in his words in his deeds. No doubt God through his providence was using this to prepare Moses to be the leader that would take his people out of Egypt. You see God's work at hand truly. But here surrounded by all of this how did he say no to it? Well he did say no. Hebrews 11, 24 and 25, by faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. So he said no to it. He said no to it. You see, after Moses was found by Pharaoh's daughter in the Nile, Miriam's nearby. And she inquires, do you, do you need help? And so Moses' own mother was paid to nurse him. In essence, she became, maybe in the eyes of Pharaoh's daughter, the nanny. But the reality was, this was Moses' own mother. Don't you see then the influence? Why, he rejected the Egyptians? I don't think he rejected the Egyptians on the basis of he's the son of Pharaoh's daughter. On that basis, he would have had the temptation not to have rejected the Egyptians. But from the first of his life, he was raised by his mother, Jacobed. You can't help but see. This is where he was influenced and where he came to be that great leader.
It was Mama. He was a great leader because he lived his life by faith. You read, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful. They were not afraid of the king's edict. This demonstrates the faith of Moses' parents. You see, that's Moses' parents who hid the child. Then you begin to read about Moses himself, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And if we were to say, how is it that he made this choice? I'm convinced we're told right here that it was a choice that's made by faith. And then we continue to read in verse 25, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. And again, if we were to say, how'd you make that choice? Again, it was by faith. That's what we read in verse 24. Then as you continue on reading verse 27, you find that he left Egypt not being afraid of the anger of the king. Now, if we once again say how or why, you see that it's by faith. And then look how this verse ends. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. As seeing, as if he could have seen. But the reality is God's invisible. This reminds me of what faith is as you read in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. He didn't see God, but it's as if he did. He was so convinced. And so by faith, he left Egypt. And so when we find his life and how he lived and say, how, how, how? Uh, well, it's by faith. But we have to realize that faith means, well, I don't think that things have changed. Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And no doubt that's how faith in God was produced in Moses' own life. He heard the word of God. Where? Not from Pharaoh's daughter. But once again, I think you'd have to conclude it must have been from his mother, Jochebed. All that we read there in Hebrews 11, 23 through 27 of Moses, you wouldn't be reading it. Had not his mother instilled within him the word of God, so by him having that faith. Here you see Jochebed and Moses. We might say, what a mama in Jochebed, and what a man and what a leader in Moses. So kind of moving from, okay, here was a great leader, and we see behind it was mama. How can a woman today become such a godly woman? You know, I'm convinced that, you know, as we see these things about Moses, you can't help but be impressed by these two words, by faith. And so it needs to be today of every woman. And she is a Christian woman, a godly woman. She's living her life by faith. And the means to coming to faith has not changed. Once again, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If faith is built, if faith increases, it's got to be that a person is continuing in the word of God on a regular basis. I know that mamas stay busy. Mamas stay busy. My mother was a busy mother. And then when I was in the sixth grade, she went to work as a seamstress and later worked at a, uh, a factory that kind of that would bind books, a book binder. And then later she worked at another sewing factory. Some of you ladies might remember the brand Act 3. That's what my mama, 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 I think I'm gonna have a hard time with this mama word. That's what she made for the last few years of her life. Well, I can tell you, she was busy. And uh, especially moms who work outside the home, busy. And so I think sometimes mom can think, how do I find the time to read, to study? You know, sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes, let me just say this, consider listening. How much time do you have in your automobile? 
where you could be listening to the Word of God. And if somebody says, well, I don't have it. I can't listen to it. You can buy it. I went on eBay and I just checked. You can get the entire King James Version in MP3s for only $8. You can get the entire English Standard Bible in MP3s for just $18 on eBay. Most newer cars now do uh, play MP3s. And if somebody says, well, mine doesn't even have a CD player anymore. Well, then burn it to a thumb drive and stick it in there. It, it probably handled that. And, and listen. In other words, it's just kind of work it in the best. But the only way you do work it in is if you're determined. And so listen to God's word. There's no faith or growth in faith apart from reading of God's word. Listen to God's good sermons preaching the word. Um, there's a lot of lectureships. The entire lectureship is on a M in MP3s on uh, either uh, thumb drives or s CDs. Uh, and, and cheap comparatively. Listen to good sermons. How can a woman today be that godly woman? It's not just a matter of faith. It's also the practice. In Hebrews 5, 14, but solid food is for the mature. For those who have their, look, powers of discernment trained by constant practice distinguish good and evil. In other words, the good you know, you do it. The evil that you know, you shun it. And you become better at knowing good and evil. Practice. And also by being a godly wife. Somebody might think, what's being a godly mama got to do with being a godly wife? Well, it's got so much to do with it. The home that best nurtures a child to become a godly man or woman is a home where the husband and wife love each other, and are together making the effort to have a good marriage. This is the foundation the children need. It ought not be that our children wonder, does mama love daddy or does daddy love mama? No, that shouldn't be. They need their mom, they need their dad. And so that marriage of the wife, the husband, needs to be that priority. And so you'd find that Paul speaks of it in Ephesians 5, 22 to 30, really 33, and then 1 Peter 3, verses 1 through 7. And then next we would say by being a godly mother, not just a godly wife, but a godly mother. See, our children need to see us and I think that's kind of what my sisters were writing. Some things they saw in, in mom that that's how they were influenced. You know, they need to see, for instance, mom actively participating in worship. It ought to be that the children don't ever think to themselves or ask their parents, are we going this Sunday or are we waking up? Are we going this morning? They know I'm going to be in worship. If they go on vacation. They know that mom and dad have found or are going to find that place that they will be in worship. That it is an absolute priority to them. And that it, it takes precedent over any other activity. In other words, being in worship the Lord's day. But I suggest too that it's not just being in worship, but also actively participating in the activities of the church. How wonderful it is if you can see your mom maybe preparing for Bible class that she's going to teach. Or you know that she's in there cooking and you don't get to have that food. Maybe you don't even get a slice of the cake because it's going to brother, sister, so-and-so who has a need. Or maybe you see her on the telephone and she's making a phone call and you hear just a gist of it, but you know what she's doing is she's calling somebody who needs encouragement. So those are things that children, they need to see. And we need to be telling our children what we want them to become. You know, there's the element of what we tell our children can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. We need to build them up, to encourage them, to point them in the direction of what's good. You know, as I mentioned, and I, I'm not saying this because it's Mother's Day. 
If I were to say, who influenced me to preach? My mom is at the top of the list. And, it's, and it is, this, this memory I have of her saying, you're going to be a preacher when you grow up. What are you going to be when, you're, when you grow up? Well, I knew to say then was a preacher. And, oh yes, there were other influences. And of course, certainly the influence was the gospel itself. But oh, how a difference it makes if we as parents, we let them know what they need to become. Is it all right if your child doesn't become a preacher? Of course it's all right. But at all points, letting them know that you, you're expecting of them to be a faithful Christian. No matter what choice in life they choose by way of profession, being a Christian, that's number one. That's number one. The influence of a godly mother. As I said, I know that not all of you have had, had that. Those of you that have had that, how blessed you are. But ladies, it's like you get the choice now. You can be that godly mother. And so I pray that you would. If we could encourage you to be obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, being a godly mother is all about mama living a Christian life. Are you a Christian? We know because of sin, we're lost. We know because of God's grace and mercy, we can be saved and he'll forgive. We need to respond to that gift he would give us in faith, turning from our sin, to confess our faith, to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. We could assist you in that this morning. If there's a need for prayer, we'd be glad to take the time and pray for you. If you need to come, please come as we stand and sing.